Hello people and welcome back to the channel. Today we have another tactic. It's a 3-4-3 three, three that focuses on overloads and trying to exploit the space that we have created. A lot of our build up patterns has been taken from Thomas Tuchel. Also the way he gets his wingers to operate in between the lines. So we've tried to replicate that from Thomas Tuchel's tactics and to pull it into our own 3-4-3. Three, three. So not to get confused, it's not a Thomas Tuchel replication. We're just taking some of his tactical ideas and putting it into our own. A 3-4-3 three, three generally doesn't score a lot of goals, but this this one does it's got one over 100 goals with Bournemouth tested in the championship so in this video we're going to break down the tactic play a game just to see how the tactic plays out and then look at those test results so before we get stuck in the video if you are enjoying my type of content make sure you are subscribed leave a comment leave a like all of that's going to help the algorithm and let's get stuck in to this video So again, this isn't a Thomas Tuchel replication, but what we are trying to do is take some of the build-up patterns, but also how his wingers operate in between the lines. What Tuchel's Chelsea and the three at the back shapes do so well is the ability to overload the first line of the oppositional press, as the shape naturally creates a number of passing angles when building from deep. This gives the side a variety of ways to build out from the back. The central midfielders may drop alongside the back three, and this gives Chelsea another option in possession to bypass an opposition's high press. Chelsea are patient in possession when building out and instead of resulting into a more direct ball, they will look to circulate the ball or switch play to the wing backs in order to progress up the field. They also play a number of one touch passes circulating the ball at pace even despite the patience. This is something that we want to capture when building, we want to focus on freeing up our wing backs so it's important to overload one side of the pitch to free up the opposite wing back who can then drive into space or be isolated in a 1v1 situation against the opposition's defender. In order to find the wing backs in space, we will look to work the ball inside forcing the opposition to defend in the central areas and then play the ball out to the free wing back. Going forward and in true positional play fashion, Tuchel wants his side to be able to find players in between the lines of the opposition, particularly the two wingers and the lone centre forward who are constantly creating angles. This is also what we want to achieve with our 3-4-3 by having the wingers invert and forming a box like shape with the central midfielders, causing an over Load, with the wingers looking for space in between the lines. Chelsea's attacking structure resembles a 3-1-6 or a 3-1-5-1 dependent on the positioning of the striker, whilst we'll look very similar in a 3-1-1-5. That's the analysis of the 3-4-3, so what we're going to do now is go into Football Manager, create that 3-4-3, play a game to see how the tactic plays out and then look at the results. So let's head over to Football Manager. Welcome back and in this part we're going to create the 343, the download link will also be in the description and you don't necessarily have to download the tactic, you can always just take in the information and also some tactical ideas. Before we go into details of the 343, we could look at the strengths of a 343 formation. We can shift into a 541 when lengthy spells without the ball and when we are operating in a mid block. Having four wide players can protect against wide overloads, alternatively the attacking wing backs and wingers can be two versus one against the opposition fullbacks. With wingbacks advancing, the shape can create overloads in the attacking third with the two wingers and the central forward. Five at the back allows us to cover all zones when defending and the shape naturally creates a number of passing angles and triangles. Finally, get wingers to play very narrow, form in a box with the central midfielders and operate in between the lines. And to start off the mentality, we're going to use the attacking mentality like before and the reasons being I like to get bodies further forward and overload in those attacking areas. Of course, once we create create those overloads I then want to exploit any space that we have created so I've gone with the attacking mentality in possession the attacking width is fairly narrow so when we're building especially in those deeper areas we're going to try and focus playing in the central areas and that frees up those wing backs and then we can play those switch balls to any of the wing backs who are free in space for the approach play we're going to pass into space because we're not really a heavy possession based side we're kind of more of a counter attacking side so once we get the ball again we're looking to exploit the space get players running further forward and we're going to play the ball into their path rather than into their feet we're going to play out of defense which is going to be important especially when trying to replicate Thomas Tuchel's build up patterns and with the tempo extremely high get the ball from defence to attack at the quickest possible tempo. In the final third we're going to leave the crosses at mix but we're going to work the ball 
ball into the box and be more expressive. Without being more expressive, what I noticed is that our centre forward became isolated. With being more expressive, I noticed that our wingers especially, they started making movements, they were roaming from their positions and linking up better with the centre forward. So that's the reasons why I went with be more expressive. They also notably take more long shots. In transition, when the possession has been lost, we are going to counter press, squeeze the opposition, don't allow them to play. And when possession has been won, then we're going to make our counter attacking movements. When the goalkeeper is in possession, he's just going to roll it out, distribute the ball to either of the centre backs or the full backs. Well, we're playing wing backs, but hopefully they are going to look for those wing backs as well. Out of possession, we're going to squeeze the opposition, so we're not going to give them any space. We're really going to suffocate them. But if you do want to opt for a mid block, then you can just shift the line of engagement down to standard now you become more of a high to mid block rather than just a high press but i prefer my side in a high press against the bigger size you may want to opt for the high to mid block defensive width are going to leave unstandard the trigger press is going to be set to much more often and we are going to prevent that short goalkeeper distribution so that there is the team instructions now we can look at the player roles and their instructions so in goal we're going to be operating with a sweeper keeper on the supportive duty the back three now this is going to be intriguing we are going to be using two wide centre backs but one of them is going to be under attacking duty the one under attacking duty really does play some nice football he gets further forward he does pop up with a few assists as well so watch out with your wide centre back you may want to opt for a very good centre back but he's also very key in creating those wide overloads on the left side of the pitch in the middle of the back three we are going to be using a ball playing defender on the defensive duty and the wide defender on the right is going to be a wide centre back but on the defensive duty now for the instructions now the wide centre back on the attacking duty he's going to be tackling harder but also shorter passing because we want to circulate the ball just like Thomas Tuchel's Chelsea the ball playing defender in the middle he too is going to be tackling harder dribbling more so he can progress with the ball at feet and link up with the central midfielders but he's also going to be passing shorter now you will notice that I can't actually kick shorter passing so what you have to do is go to the team instructions passing directness slightly more direct go back to your ball playing defender now you can select shorter pass and press ok go back to your passing directness on the team instructions and then go back to where it was before and now you can see pass it shorter so he's going to dribble more and tackle harder the wide centre back on the right he's going to cross less often because the wide centre back do like to cross in those wider regions so cross less often shorter passing and tackle harder now for the wing backs both wing backs are going to be very very aggressive so wing backs on the attacking duty they're going to be getting further forward and a lot of the times they're going to be your most creative player on the pitch they're just going to bump further forward and because we've created the space for them we've created overloads in the center of the park and that frees up the wing backs so then once they get the ball they're going to be in space where they can drive or the team may shift over and create even more overloads out in those wider flanks but the wing backs they're going to be taking more risk and tackling harder as well so they're going to be more aggressive off the ball and then on the ball they're going to be well trying to create and break the opposition down in central midfield we are going to be using a central midfielder on support but he's going to also be tackling harder and then his midfield partner is going to be a box to box midfielder again tackle harder but he's going to get further forward when the team has the ball move into the channel so that can stretch the opposition's defense take more risk and also he is able to progress with the ball so he's going to be dribbling more on the flanks in the attacking area we do have two different roles the one on the left is going to be an inverted winger on supportive duty and the winger on the right is going to be inside forward on the supportive duty the reason being i just want some variety in attack as well so the inside forward he's just going to be focused on getting further forward and being a strike partner with the striker and inverted winger he's going to be looking more to come inside operate around the zone 14 in behind the opposition's defense and then midfield and he also is going to create some chances for us so the inverted winger he's going to be sitting more narrow getting further forward and also tackle harder whilst the right winger he's just going to be sitting more narrow and tackling harder lastly up top we do have a pressing forward the main goal scorer on attack working hard for the team he doesn't have any added instruction and that there my friends is the tactic all wrapped up here we have the 3-4-3 three, three. well the game says 5-2-3 and as you can see with the completed version is exactly the same so what we're going to do now is go into a game with AFC Bournemouth to see how the tactic plays out hopefully we play some nice football and hopefully we get the three points so now let's load up the match and play the game 
So here we are, and this is the team that I've gone with as well. We're actually very early in the season. We've only played three games. Blackpool are currently second. So it's first versus second. It could be a very decent game. But let's load up this game or get into the game, sorry, and hopefully we can get the three points. You know what? This is a match that we should be winning. Make sure we do. Go out there and win the game, boys. Let's go and win this game. And let's just pump up the midfielder defenders and the attackers as well. Hopefully, this helps. And I think today we're going to use extended highlights as well. I think with Key, we miss out on a lot of good highlights. So we're going to use extended and hopefully we can see more of the tactic play out. Let's get stuck into this game. Here is an early throw in to Blackpool deep in their own half. Here is Keo on the ball for Blackpool. They've kicked it long. We should recover this. There is Stephen Cook and Cahill now. Plays it out wide to Jack Stacey. He's dribbling down that byline. Oh, he looks for Dominic Solanke, but it's nicely cut out. Maxwell kicks it long. Again, we've recovered the ball. And again, it's to Gary Cahill. Look at the wing back. He's completely free out on the flank there. And that's what I mean about working. Oh, and that's what I mean about working the ball inside and then out. Gary Cahill here, he picks up the ball. And instead of looking out to those wider flanks right away, we're actually just going to play the ball into the central area. And this drags in their wider players and makes them defend a little bit more narrow. And that gives up or makes free space for the wing back. Here you can see Jack Spacey. He's just in a lot of space and he could just drive out, has time to pick out a cross. It's a good cross. Dominic Solanke could do better. So that was an early chance for Bournemouth. Here's another one. Stephen Cook on the ball now. Jack Stacey. Cook puts in the ball for Christy Stacey. Oh, that should be another one. We should be two up by now. There was two very good chances, but look how narrow, just look how narrow our wingers, and it's forming kind of a box shape, which is exactly what we want. So what we're saying right now is a very, very good shape from AFC Bournemouth. Here's James on the ball, nicely cut out by Low, but it falls back to them. Oh, here's Bowler. Good save by Nyland or Nyland. Doesn't matter. It's a good save by the Bournemouth goalkeeper and Blackpool. Could have been 1-0 up there. Here's Jefferson Lerma, Jack Stacey, Cook on the ball now. Here's Lewis Cook, Dominic Solanke. He finds he finds Stacey again out wide. Dominic Solanke gets his shot blocked. Christy oh, almost fell to another Bournemouth player. But again, nice build up in those central areas and then hit the flanks at the right time. We're putting a lot of pressure on Blackpool in these early stages. There's Cahill, Christy gets the ball now. Jefferson Lerma, Solanke, Lewis Cook runs in through the middle. Oh my God, how have we not scored that one? That's three good chances that we've had. We could easily, easily have scored three goals. Blackpool themselves could have the goal. Dominic Solanke has his header blocked by the goalkeeper, but he puts in the rebound and it's Dominic Solanke with the goal. Bournemouth one, Blackpool nil. I think he's going to show us a highlight. Yes, it is. Harris Smith, let's get our angles right. Puts it in the ball, Solanke, nice um, save by Maxwell, but he puts in the rebound. It's Blackpool 1, sorry, Bournemouth 1, Blackpool 0. It's been a very decent half from Bournemouth here. Oh, we're a bit zoomed in there. Dominic Solanke wins the header, his low. Kelly on the ball now, Lewis Cook plays the ball. That's a nice ball. Brad Smith, low, Cook. Ah, oh, his long shot goes over the bar. Some nice football there. Again, finding that wing back in space. The wing backs are vital. If they have good first touch, decision making, vision, all of those good technical attributes. I mean, once he finds the ball in those attacking areas, it could be very dangerous. We've kicked it long, though I don't like that. I'm not a big fan of that kicking long there. We could have played that from the back there, but Jack Stacey picks up the ball regardless. He hits it down to the channel to Ryan Christie. Jefferson Lerma now. You can see, look, us getting four players out in those wider areas, looking to create that overload. Dominic Solanke, Critty, and look, the free wing back again, Brad Smith. What's he? Oh, he's turned back. What's he done? It's low. Stacey. Oh, we've had a shot blood. I don't know what. No idea what Smith has done there. I don't think he's got the ball under control there. Boom, long kick. Let's win that. There it is. Gary Cahill, Jefferson Lerma. Low, the free wing back again. He's going to drive down that byline. Puts in the cross, but nobody's there. Jefferson Lerma. Oh, what a ball. Smith again. Here's Kelly now supporting. Jefferson Lerma with the long shot. What a goal. What a goal. And there is the wide centre back with an assist. Even though he didn't get further forward and get the assist whilst inside the box. Regardless, it's still an assist. Jefferson Lerma with a nice through ball to Brad Smith. He cuts back. Looks for Kelly. He plays it inside to Jefferson Lerma. What a hit, son. 
What a hit. It's 2-0 to Bournemouth inside the first half. So we're going in half time, playing very well. Playing some nice football, 66% of the ball, wow. Bear in mind, we aren't a heavy possession based team, Well, we aren't trying to be anyway. But I'm gonna tell them I'm happy with our passing so far. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm not because passing isn't a big part of our game. So though I am happy with the passing, it's not something that I want to highlight because it's not something I want them to keep repeating game after game after game. But I think we are doing well and we definitely can find another gear to take charge of this match. Let's get that third goal. Here's Blackpool with an attacking throw in. They might come out attacking, they might come out fighting. Gabriel holds on the ball out wide. They get a shot blocked, it falls to Lavery. Wintle, he has a long shot but it goes wide. Look how deep Blackpool are playing. They have nine bodies inside their own area but they do have another corner. Are they going to capitalise? Nicely gathered there by the Bournemouth goalkeeper. What's he going to do? Hopefully he just rolls it out as he's instructed to. Yes he does to Cook. He brings it out wide. He plays it inside to Lerma. Christie, oh he's lost the ball there. No idea what he's trying to do there. Hopefully our goalkeeper makes this. Yes, he does. He recovers the ball. What's he going to do? Hopefully he rolls it out again. Cahill, Kelly. Back to Cahill. He's going to dribble now. Bring the ball forward progressively. Oh, that's a loose ball. I mean, we've come out of the second half. Just, you know what? Focus. Because it looks like we've lost focus. It looks like we have lost concentration. Maxwell kicks it long from the goal kick. Nylon collects it, plays it to Kelly. Kelly to Cook, inside to Jefferson Lerma, he plays it back to Nylon. Here we're just circulating the ball now, being patient with our build up, looking for that free space, there it is to Brad Smith, he's out wide, a nice little overload there and he plays it through to Solanke, oh, unlucky, that was a good, that was good thinking, that was good thinking by Solanke there, almost paid off, almost, here's Dale for Blackpool. But Lerma picks up the ball now. Here is Lowe driving at the Bournemouth or Blackpool defence. Smith out wide now. Lowe. Oh, what a goal. Excellent interchange by the two left-sided players there. What a goal by AFC Bournemouth. It is 3-0 now. I can't wait to see this replay. Here we are. Here is Smith. Here's Kelly. Lowe. All our wide players on the left there. The wide centre back. The left wing back. And the inverted winger as well. He cuts inside. What a finish in the goalkeeper's top left corner. It is 3-0 to AFC Bournemouth. Let's make a sub. Let's just make a tactical sub. And maybe we can now operate in a mid block. Should we drop the line of engagement? Let's operate in the mid block now, just for the remainder, for the last 30 minutes of this game. Cahill is on the yellow card, so we bring on Chris Mentham. Christie has worked hard, so we're gonna bring on Junior Stanislas. Confirm those changes. Here is Brad Smith on the ball now, driving. Driving down that byline. He's going to go right down to the byline. Puts it in the box to Solanke, but he doesn't win the header. Kelly picks up the ball. Here is Jack Stacey now. Puts it in the box. Oh, Solanke should have scored. It should be four. Oh, it should be four. So we've created some good chances. We've had 21 shots on goal, eight on target, and XG over two goals. Wow, we could have easily scored five. Maybe I'm, am I exaggerating? I'm not sure. In the first half, we could have scored more goals. Especially early on, good challenge there by Lewis Cook. Blackpool finding it hard to play through. Kelly picks up the ball, plays it to Cook now. Junior Stanislas, Jack Stacey. I'm not sure what he's done there. Referee! Second yellow, surely ref. Yes, it. Oh, straight off. No, it's the second yellow. Stanislas puts the ball into the box. That's a poor free kick. I expected better there from Stanislas, but he finds Smith out wide. It's Kelly back to Smith. Back to Kelly, back to Smith. <laughs> Here is Lewis Cook on the ball now. He finds Kelly out in those wider areas. Smith again, Lewis Cook. Look at us being patient. Just let, there he is, there's the killer ball. Put the ball into the box now. Stacy, have a shot. Oh, that was a wayward finish. Oh, they've run into each other. That is awful football there from Blackpool. Go on Stanislas, he puts pressure on the wing back. Go on son, go on drive, drive son. Oh, unlucky. Unlucky Stanislas. Collected by Jack Stacey now. He drives inside with the ball. He looks for Lowe. Lowe surely is going to play it out wide. Yes, it is. Finds Kelly. He finds Smith. Is Lowe now? Oh, another shot blocked. Have a shot. Oh, unlucky, sir. Blackpool are all 
all over the place at the moment. I'm very, very happy with this game here. Probably, here's Jack Stacy now. Stanislas. Puts it in the box and it's Jamal Lowe. It's four and it's Jamal Lowe's second goal of the game. I mean, Blackpool, it's been an absolute shambles today. <laughs> they started well, they started the season well, but today they've just been ripped open by a very, very good Bournemouth side. He puts the ball in, Lowe, nice finish there. I mean, just look at the stats here. 27 shots at goal, 11 on target, XG of 3.18, and we have created two clear-cut chances. So it also looks like switching to the um, low block, I meant mid block, sorry, that kind of helped us. It has helped us. They haven't been able to break us down all game, but especially after we changed to a mid block. But there it is, the game all wrapped up and finished. AFC Bournemouth 4, Blackpool 0. Now it's time to look at the results and data. Welcome to the results and data part of the video. I mean, you probably guessed the results by looking at the title of this video, but AFC Bournemouth did win the league. They played 46, they won 34 during seven of those games, losing five, those five losses. Well, four of them came away from home and we, well, all of them almost by one goal defeats, but Mill will beat us 2-0 and we had a points tally of 109. We don't have anybody in the top three of the goal scorers, but for the average rating, Stephen Cook on 7.62, Chris Memphin on 7.5, Ryan Christie with 19 assists. Now let's look at the stats in a little bit more detail. So we've scored the most goals in a championship with 102 goals, the most shots for, the fewest shots against. For the best pass completion we finished, well not in the top 8, but for the most possession we come in 3rd with 55%. For the most tackles won we come in 8th, for the most dribbles made we come in 2nd, for the most clean sheets it's Bournemouth and for the fewest conceded it's Bournemouth again. For the top goal scorer Ryan Christie scored 15 goals, Solanke I think he might have been up there, he would have been up there but he did get an injury. For the most assists Ryan Christie with 19 assists, Jack Stacey with 13, most shots 4, nobody in the top 8. For the most man of the match awards we do have Jack Stacey on 8, Steve Cook on 7. For some reason that right side of centre back just performs extremely well. For the most key passes Jack Stacey the right wing back and Ryan Christie so you can see how important the wing backs are. For the best pass completion nobody there. We're not expecting anyone to be there. Most tackles won, nobody there, but for the most triples made, we do have Jack Stacey again. This is why the wing backs are vital. For the clean sheets, Nylan with the most clean sheets and for the few is conceded our goalkeeper in second place. Now, let's move over to that data hub. We can look at the past map from the most recent game and you can see how heavy we played the ball out in those wider areas. Looking at the attacking efficiency, we were aggressive and clinical. We had the most shots per game, well, by some distance as well, just over 18 shots per game. Our conversion rate was around 12%, so very decent when it comes to our attacking efficiency. For our defensive efficiency, again, very strong. We were quiet, we were impenetrable. The three at the back is very good because we can defend in all of the defensive zones. Now for the crosses, we were excellent with the crosses. We put in a lot of crosses, but we were also accurate for our possession we did frequently win the ball but we were loose and i guess that's down to our very direct play we have a lot of players taking more risk but also we are playing at a very very high tempo for the passing we made fewer passes but we were fairly accurate with it for the xg table we were expected to score 90 goals but we scored 102 we had an expected points of 93.6 but our actual points was on 109 and for the expected positions was first and our actual position was first. Now let's look at the squad stats who were the top goal scorer and all of that good stuff within the squad. Ryan Christie the most goals with 17 goals, Jamal Lowe with 16, Dominic Solanke you can see how he was injured, he scored 13 goals but in 14 starts if he played more no doubt he would have scored more. Robbie Brady scored 12 goals and Stephen Cook or Steve Cook I keep calling him Stephen, Steve Cook scored 10. For the most assists, Ryan Christie with 21 in all competitions and Jack Stacey with 13. But unfortunately, that's the video wrapped up. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Don't forget, if you are new and you enjoyed this video, make sure you are subscribed, make sure you like the video, leave a comment. All of that will help the channel grow. It's going to help the algorithm. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but I just know all the likes and the comments does help the channel grow. But I'll speak to you guys soon. Stay safe. Shout out to all my Patreons. Speak soon and God bless.